Hi, I'm Clark on Sailing Vessel Temptress. Today we're going to talk about zincs or sacrificial anodes that protect your boat from corrosion. I'm sure you all know what a zinc is, and I'm sure you know how it's used and what it's for. It keeps these from corroding in the ocean. Uh, probably somebody at a bar stool at a yacht club or whatever told you about it, and, and you do it. And really, just do it. That's all you need to do. The problem is, you might not know why you do it. And if you're curious, I'm going to tell you why. Here's the problem with our community. <laughs> uh, I don't think you've ever met a sailor that said, I don't know. They, if they have any inkling, they give you an answer. And because of that, there's a lot of half answers going around. I like to say as a joke, everybody wants to be the professor, even if they're really Gilligan. Okay, we're going to dive down and be a little more professor today. Metal is great stuff. It's hard and it's strong and you can make it thin and have it work for you, but it corrodes. When metals get wet, they corrode faster. And uh, you may not know, but many do, that when they get wet with salt water, they corrode much faster. So how do we have metals like propellers underwater on a boat? And a boat that's in salt water for its life. Well, what we do is we put zincs on it, on the boat. A zinc will protect the propeller bronze propeller from corroding away underwater. And if that's all you care to know, you can turn this video off now. Keep your zincs up. Uh, when they corrode away, you know, buy a new one, put it on. That's it. But this wouldn't be an Emily and Clark's uh, adventure video if I didn't go way too deep into it. If you've got a boat with metal underwater and you store it in the water, not on a trailer, you know, where you're just using it occasionally, you need a zinc. And that includes if you have an outboard motor. Now, all outboard motors have a zinc on them already. If you look around, you'll find some unpainted metal down there. That's your zinc. Sometimes there's a little fin uh, that you use to balance the motor with, but it's the zinc. What if you've got a lot of metal under your boat? What if your whole boat's made out of metal? Well, then you really need zincs. Uh, you probably know more about this than anybody already because nobody buys a steel boat unless they understand all this. But, you know, you all know what steel would do in just left out in your backyard. It's going to rust up into a mess. But there's steel boats that have been floating for like 50 years. How do they do this? Zincs. It's a weird thing. Now, of course, if the boat's painted all up good, it's not going to corrode because the paint protects it. But if you hit a rock or something and scratch it, that would start corroding. And it would corrode super fast underwater. But I've seen boat yards where um, they haul a steel boat out of the water and there's a big old section with no paint on it. And the metal is shiny, clean. I mean, it's like, like, the, like you just machined it. Because it was being protected while it was underwater by its zincs. But the thing is, when it comes out of the water, there's no more circuit. It's no longer protected by its zincs. Within a couple days, that'll all be ready. So it's really weird. Because of your zincs, steel boat is more protected in the water than it is in the boatyard. I'm going to go into the different kinds of zincs, the shapes, how to use them, but before I do that, let's have a little bit of a science lesson. Basically, I'm going to tell you how to build a battery from scratch. A battery makes electricity, you know, that could run the boat and all that. Uh, not this one. This one makes a very little electricity and you want to keep it low and small so it lasts a long time. But it actually protects your metal. What a, a galvanic cell is, what an electrochemical cell is, in, in the sh simplest possible case, it's an electrolyte solution, which means like salt water, you know, some water that can move electrons through it, you know, conduct electricity. And uh, two different metals, honestly, two different of any element, but metals are easy to work with. So two different metals. Now, you put the two metals into the electrolyte solution, and if you ran a wire between the two metals, you'd have a complete circuit and it would actually flow electrons and, and make electricity, you have a battery. You've probably done something where you took a potato or a lemon and put some zinc and some copper, I guess it is, and run a clock off it or something, you know, in school. Um, that's what you've done there. 
but let's talk a little bit more about what's really happening. There is a concept called electronegativity, and then there's a simplification of the concept called nobility, probably an older term. Uh, I'm going to talk about both of them because if you want to do searches and stuff, it's good to know all the buzzwords to make Google be your friend. But it boils down to this. Every element has an electronegativity. If you made that cell using two elements, two different elements, the difference in their electronegativity is the total voltage that the cell would produce. Um, the noble metals kind of work the same way. The least noble metals are the ones with the greater electronegativity. Now, when you build that cell, one side of it is called the cathode and one side is called the anode. They're weird terms and quite honestly, if I don't use them often, I have to go look them up again. But it boils down to the more electronegative one of them is the anode and it gives up metal into solution in the electrolyte in the process. The other one is the cathode and it, it, given the opportunity, it would actually plate on metal, but in the ocean, there isn't any free copper or bronze or whatever to, to plate on. So it just sits there not being harmed. That's why we call a zinc a sacrificial anode. It actually sacrifices itself. It, it gives up of its own metal to protect the bronze. So let's look at the metals that are typically under a boat. You've got stainless steel, you've got uh, copper nickel, which kind of looks like stainless steel. Probably your shaft is that. They call it Monel sometime, but it's a, it's a copper nickel compound. Uh, you've got bronze. Uh, bronze is mostly zinc and copper. Um, what else have you got down there? You could have lead and uh, you could have, uh, honestly, you could have cast iron down there. It, it happens and, and it can work as long as you protect it. Beyond that, you can get real crazy. You could have a boat made out of steel. So you've got steel to protect and we all know steel likes to rust. You could have your whole boat made out of aluminum. Our dinghy's made out of aluminum and it's doing fine in the salt water because of this process. So what you do is you choose an anode that is more electronegative than the metal you're trying to protect or the most electronegative one you're trying to protect. This is probably what you're trying to protect the most, your propeller. A lot of stuff down there that's nice to protect, but this is what's gonna die first. This would actually almost protect everything else. So we're gonna protect all of these things by protecting the bronze. Okay, let's talk specifically about the anode now. These are zincs. They come in different shapes. Uh, they connect to the boat in different ways. And honestly, these aren't all zinc. They're different metals. In salt water, usually on a boat that you're trying to protect the bronze, you use zinc. But there's other metals you could use. Uh, you could use aluminum and you could use magnesium. I don't precisely know what this is, but I can tell it's not zinc. It's very light. Um, I think it's mostly magnesium, maybe a little bit of aluminum. Who knows? Maybe a little bit of zinc, but it's more electronegative than the zinc, so it can protect things further down. Um, this particular one was sold to go on an outboard motor. Now, outboard motors are made out of aluminum, so this is the right chemistry to protect the aluminum. Um, why I buy these? is I put these on my aluminum dinghy. So it protects my aluminum dinghy quite well from corrosion because aluminum, you know, will get eaten up eventually in salt water. Uh, magnesium is uh, very far down the, the electronegativity uh, uh, range. If you were to use it on a bronze, regular classic kind of metals boat, it would work. It would work wonders and it would give up its, uh, energy, it's metal, way too fast. So that's why zinc's a little better. It reacts slower. But if you're in fresh water, um, there isn't enough salt to make the circuit. So you need something with a little more punch. And uh, I understand the people up in the Great Lakes and stuff use uh, the magnesium zincs a lot. So find out what you should use in your area, but get that zinc. 
Uh, just wanted to point out the whole thing that you're not going to find much information on how to protect an aluminum boat in the salt water, but protect it the same way that anybody would protect their aluminum outboard motor and you'll be fine. Okay, so for anode metals, chiefly we use zinc, aluminum, and magnesium. Now let's take a second to talk about shapes. Um, you see this has a hole through the center and it has these screws that it comes in two parts and you can clamp it together. This is designed to be clamped right onto your propeller shaft, right beside your propeller. And uh, it provides great protection because it's nice and close and it's convenient to put on. Uh, if you've got a long exposed shaft, you use something shaped like these because they're kind of hydrodynamic, you know. If you have a very small amount of space, you use something shaped like this because it doesn't take up much room. I have to use these. Um, I bought these because I got a really good deal on them and I use an angle grinder and cut them down so they fit. Uh, this is a little zinc that was designed, it's got pre-drilled tapped holes on it. It was designed to go on an outboard motor uh, and honestly it works for an outboard motor very, very well, but it'll also work for your dinghy. Uh, these were for a great big outboard motor and this is what I actually use on our dinghy because, well, the bigger you get them, the cheaper. Now this is the cheapest zinc I got. Um, I bought this as a, a plate of zinc about this long um, many years ago. And I cut it into these pieces. And before I mount on the boat, I'll drill a couple holes in it. Um, Temptress has a couple places you can put zincs. She has the shaft, of course. But she also has two plate zincs. I've drilled and tap um, holes into what's called the rudder shoe. It's where the bottom of the rudder connects on. It's all a bronze structure down there. And I really don't, I'd rather replace the propeller than try to replace that. That's all custom bronze work. So I keep a couple bronze plates bolted on and these are convenient as anything. They um, um, last quite a long time. And what I do is every time I haul the boat out of the water, I take the one that's eroded the most, unbolt it, put a new one on. And then the next time I haul out, the other one will be corroded the most. So I go back and forth. So every four or five years, I replace one of these. As a little side effect, Temptress has connections between her rudder system and her engine and her propeller system. It's the bonding system I talk about in the lightning video, but it, it provides protection for the bronze from these big plate zincs. Now, how do I know this? Well, honestly, I had this propeller on the boat and for years it would make this ringing noise and it drove me crazy and I decided I hated this propeller. And since I had a spare, I just said, I'm gonna stop zinking it until it can stop ringing. Oh, let me jump aside. Listen to this. Hear that ring? Sounds like a bell. That means this bronze is in good shape. But if I hit this and it sounded dead, like this. Well, that means that the zincs have been leached out of it. And it's just a matrix of copper now. And, and it's weak. That's because it was unprotected by a zinc. Uh, you can find boats in boat yards with like messed up props. You take them, you can break pieces right off them, which is ridiculous. Anyway, that's kind of showing you what happens when they go bad. Back to my story. So. I take this propeller and I say, well, I'm not going to zinc it. I'm going to let it, if it breaks, it breaks. I'll change propellers. But if it gets just dead enough, I don't have to hear that horrible noise all the time. And it was while sailing. Um, that'll be cool. Anyway, I went like three years without a zinc on this. And it was fine. So I realized what was happening is the big zincs were doing the job. Uh, then I changed engine one time and I was not in a hurry. Honestly, I had a, a day job and I was doing it on weekends. It took me four months and during those four months I had the shaft disconnected from the engine so I had lost this protection. This propeller wasn't there at the time. I had another one on there, um, which I don't have anymore. Well, anyway, got the new engine in, put it in gear, started vibrating horribly, broke a blade right off. In just four months, I lost a perfectly good propeller. So tells you why you want a zinc. You should check your zincs often. 
um, they will corrode away and you start getting used to that rate and you'll know your own boat and every boat's going to be a little different for that. If you're in a marina and someone has like a power cord dangling in the water that's not wired right and they've got stuff going down the ground line, you could lose your zincs virtually overnight. So you need to check them uh, often. Now, most people uh, love to swim in this lifestyle. You'll find yourself in the water a lot. If you, even if you just went out for a dive, before you come back in the boat, hell, you're wet, you're salty, jump in the boat, or jump in the water, dive down and take a look at your propeller and take a look at your sink. Other thing with zincs is vibration sometimes makes them just throw off. They like loosen up their bolts and off they go. So a brand new zinc could go away. So check it every opportunity. Yeah, I got no brand name loyalty with zinc. Uh, it's an element. Uh, you certainly will find the salesman for the various companies explain why their zinc is better than other zinc, but I don't believe it. Um, you know, if they're selling you stain, um, I don't know, mild steel and calling it zinc, well, that was, that's just you're dealing with a liar. But if it's zinc, it's zinc. Can you use a secondhand zinc? Well, they're not cheap, but they're also not expensive. So you're better off because you're going to get full life out of a full zinc. But every boatyard, people have taken perfectly good zincs. Well, not perfectly good, half corroded zincs, but zincs with a lot of metal in them. And usually they get thrown in a special bucket so that the yard owner can sell them as scrap. He'll probably give them to you if you want them. Now, if you're the ambitious type and you don't mind a little bit of work, that's still good element zinc. So you could collect some zincs up however you get it and you can melt them down and cast them back into the shape. Now, casting a shape like this is probably more than you want to deal with. But if you need a plate zinc, oh my God, just melt it down. It melts at a fairly low temperature. Pour it into an old bread pan, you got zinc. So yeah, but is it worth the effort? That was a lot of information and I do tend to ramble. So I'm gonna have Emily make a chart. It's probably up on the screen now and it's gonna have all the important points and describe everything about zincs.